day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. All right. All right. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Son of God, Savior of mankind. Thank you for who you are and Holy Spirit that uh, is inside of us. Those who believe in you, thank you for who you are, dear God, the Trinity. We are blessed that we have an intimate relationship with you and that you allow us to continue to develop that relationship even further. And that you allow us to uh, put forth an effort to be, uh, to not just to fellowship with like-minded brothers and sisters, Come but also now. those who are, who are lost. Yes. Dear Father, we know that we have our own opinions about things that are going on, but what we need to do is have faith, have faith in you, that what you, your will in our lives be done. Father, we acknowledge that many times these things will be contrary to how we feel. But that's where that relationship with you, Lord Jesus, comes in. So that we may speak and do the deeds of the Father and not the deeds of the flesh. Come on now. Help us to sacrifice ourselves for your glory, dear Lord, and not for our glory. Come on. Help us to speak your words. Take what you have given us. Whether we are experts in your word or not, it's it doesn't matter, dear Father, because the Spirit will speak for us. Yes. And that's what we ask. We thank you for this fellowship that we have this morning. You've taken individuals who come from different places and, and, and different backgrounds and, and different personalities. And, yes. and you brought us together, dear Lord, so that we can <laughs> fellowship and learn. And that's how you work in mysterious yes. ways, dear Father. So that no matter what, your will will be done. Yes. We ask that you continue to bless us, bless our families, bless our friends. And we know, dear Lord, that while we are saying this prayer, that there's suffering in the world. Yes. In, in so many different ways. And we just ask that you be with those individuals who are suffering. And for those individuals who may perpetrate the suffering, be with them as well, dear Father, that they may know how merciful you are yes. and likewise feel your grace. <coughs> Father, let Jesus see us. See, uh, let Jesus be in us today. Yes. Let people see Jesus in us today, not just in word, but in deed. And we say these things in your precious and holy name, dear Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Matter of fact, I wanted to, 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 to really keep on talking about we're talking about brother uh, Addison is to go with the title too. Uh, I'll show you the slide in a minute, but the title is called Black. Whites, Browns, in the true church are not racist. Okay. What I'm saying is that the true church, meaning when we was just talking a few minutes ago, when people sit there and ask, are you saved? And some people don't even know, don't know how to answer that question, Fred Addison, tells you that you're probably not talking yet. Well, you probably talk to a baby. I want to call. I'm gonna call them babes in Christ. But let's let's just at least give that care that 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 potential there. But I, I believe that most people that that have called themselves Christians want to be a good growing Christian from milk to meat. But if you always get milk, you never can you never grow. You know, there's people as soon as I've been baptized. Uh, when you ask about they say you, you got some people sit there and say, "Well, I, I go to church." That means I'm saved, uh, but they don't they don't have much substance in them to, to be able to sit there and say, "Well, you know, I can tell you from Romans 9, 10 out of ten that if I confess my mouth to Lord Jesus and believe my heart that God raised from the dead, that I am saved, that I shall be saved." Guess what? I made that confession. I confess my mouth 
the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And I believe that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that has saved my soul. Amen. Amen. You know, to be able to be able to answer the question because I got it in my heart, I got it in the word. And then it said, do you want to get saved too? You know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. they administer that salvation to the, to the, to the people. The, the, what I wanted to talk about was the fact is the church. And, I, and the church consists of blacks, whites, brown. Because I don't think there's no other color. I don't think there's no red color. People try to get some red skin. And there's no red skin people. It's melon in the skin, right? That, that's what we got. We got various, various degrees of melon. And that melon normally is a shade of brown, <laughs> dark brown, or very light uh, complexion, what you call as whites today, right? But but it's, it's just just melon, and just those shades of colors right there. You can call it olive. Some calls it olive color. I looked at. I'm trying. I couldn't find anybody that looked olive yet, but obviously they call somebody olive. And there's somebody trying to call the, the uh, people from China. Or, or Asians as, as yellow. And I, I haven't found any yellow people. I, 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 I couldn't find any. So I think it's only those shades there. But regardless of those shades, we're talking about the church. Those who have received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And, and that's what I know is not racist. The, the, what we have is the traditions of church folks that is racist. And not just racist on uh, United States. You know that parable of the Good Samaritan is a good example of, of, of a variation of, of, of racism. Because we know the Samaritan didn't have anything to do with the Jews. Yeah, I remember that because when the woman went, when Jesus went to Samaria, walking through Samaria, and, and that, that woman that was Samaritan, and he asked her for water. And she said, you know, I'm kind of surprised you're talking to me, you. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that, that was a degree of, that's another form of racism. And these people were supposed to be, and, and both of them even had a different, they, they believed in the same God, but they worship in different locations, right? They worship in the mountains, the Samaritans did. And the Jews worship in the temple in Jerusalem, you know? But then again, they had synagogues all over them, all over Israel. So they had synagogues that they went to. But the Samaritans were a different location. But they didn't, they didn't they, and the thing about the Samaritans was what? Well, they were like mixed. There was had a mixture of Jew being Israel and a mixture of other uh, races in them that, that made them kind of be unclean. Mm -hmm. See, that's racism. That was back in the biblical days. Right, right. Where you was a Greek, where you're a Jew, <laughs> where you're a Gentile, you know, where you're a Roman citizen. Even that, remember that? Remember Paul, when he was going through his little, his situation, uh, when the man found out he was a Roman citizen, it, it, it was a different reaction toward him then, right? That's right. See? So even then, there was a social structure back in, in, in the Old Testament, the New Testament time, that has been famous for mankind throughout, the, throughout now. All right? But what right. makes the difference is, is that the church is consistent of Jews and Gentiles across the board. And those are the people who have made changes in our society and our community. And I'm trying to say is that the people who are listening, that will listen to our recording, the people, you and us individually, both to make impact outside of our huddle as well as inside of our huddle, you know? Amen. And that's what we're talking about, equipping the saints to do the work. I think, I think Brother Jack, that makes that focus on that title to do the work of the ministry. 
And, I, and, and one of the things I wanted to show you guys, and I got it in the scripture, just again, I don't get it here, was, you know, I got, I got the parable, Mark chapter four here. And when he really said, he said, no, not this parable, how would you know all parables? And what he was telling me though, this is the revelation I got, and I hope some people listen to this on, uh, on this video and as well as us individually. We're supposed to be sowers, the whole church, sowers of the word. And, and if you put the word on good ground, if a matter of fact, gets into the heart of a person, whether that person is a senator, a president, a congressman, a factory worker, a CEO, uh, a bus driver, a police officer, if that word, Brother Addison, can get in their heart, Amen. now we're talking about effective change, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause then that person is saying is, I know my job, but I also have a heart for the, for the people that God has entrusted me with, that I can't conform to the world system. Because remember, that's what it's all about, right? Transforming, not conforming to this world, but being ye transformed. So you can, we can, if you can get the word into somebody, a skinhead, if you can get the word into a KKK, if you can get the word into somebody and that they receive the revelation of Jesus Christ, we're talking about affecting change individually by sowing the word of God in the hearts of a person that becomes a believer and that then it becomes a, what do you call it? Spread, right? That's how the right. gospel spreads. So, I'm gonna share this one with you. The, the, that kind of caveats of what I'm going to. And Brother Jackson, how about you reading that for us? Okay. All right. Let's see here. I'm gonna have to move my screen out the way just a little bit. There we go. Out of Isaiah, starting in chapter 60, verse one, it says here, and we're looking at, uh, it says here, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Come on. For behold, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Come on. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Come on. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Yes. Then, shalt, then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Amen. Amen. And that's the bottom, you can read that too. At first Peter. Chapter four, verse 15, it says here, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters, amen. <laughs> because all of that will impact our worship, our fellowship, our ministry, right? And as okay. a matter of fact, the system has been, the system has been good at trying to label, even, you know, like if we talk about this movement today, right? We're talking about, the movement of the Black Lives Matter, right? The, the, the system, by bringing in even federal uh, officers or military people, is saying is they are thieves, they are looters, they are lawlessness people, you see what I'm saying? To yeah. justify the actions toward somebody. The, the racism in itself has a, has a, has to have that element of minimizing a person's abilities, minimizing their character, uh, the, it makes them a susceptible of how I want to treat them. In other words, I don't want, I don't want to treat them as a human when you talk about the social structures of black and white. 
But the church, now, because I want to shift again, why this prophecy we just read is so important is that, see, the church has white brothers, black brothers, brown brothers. The church has Asian, church have Mexican, church has Addison, the church has Jackson, the church, the church, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Amen. And if we start looking, the church is saying is that our social structure is Jesus the head, we're the body. We're one in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. With different, different gifts, different, you know, ministries, but we're still one. And what makes us one is the word of God. And it says with the commandment in New Testament, unless we, we're Christians, right? We're Christians, is that yes. we love one another. Yes. But Elder, I think one of the scriptures said that you, you, they'll know us by our love toward one another. Mm -hmm. huh? Amen? Amen. So, so, so I think this prophecy we just read comes in effect because the Gentile, because it said, remember it said the Gentiles should flow, the force of the Gentiles shall flow because they say, look, my social structure, my community, my world system, the devil's world system, it tells me to hate. It tells me to, to, to separate. It tells me to do bad things to people that, I, that it tells me it's supposed to be bad people, right? That's right. The body of Christ said, that's my brother. That's right. I gotta treat. I, I don't. I don't, I'm not gonna put my brother in a chokehold and kill him. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. I, I, it's not about being about color. It's about brother, brotherhood. You know, and sister, and being there to help a brother because the good Samaritan, the good Samaritan. I guess we should have put that in there this time. The good Samaritan helped the brother. There was one brother helping another brother in need. Mm -hmm. To the point of, and we saw the religious people, right, Brother Asin and Good Samaritan. We saw the religious people, and this guy had to be a Jew that was on the road that was injured because the priest went over. Well, not the priest. I guess it was a priest, right? One Pharisee, and I guess another one was a Sadducee or a scribe. One of them actually went over, looked at the body, looked at the man. <laughs> saw him in need and kept on going. Mm -hmm. And y'all want to know, I got I got a good parable of modern day with Brother Jackson. A couple of years ago, he sit there and picked up somebody in distress and, yeah. and, and, and took him to the police, took the person to the police station and had yeah. the man follow him up to the police station. But that, that. he was, all he saw was his mercy mm -hmm. for somebody in need. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. oh. How does that play into the minds of the saints when you see these homeless people with signs, uh, but also understanding that some of these people are just hustling? Yeah. Well, don't uh, forget, you know, and, one and thing do, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I got enough of what you was asking. Uh -huh. I, I know that the when I was in ministry and they told us, and I ain't talking about ministry, I'm talking about I was in World Change when I first started being confronted with that. Uh, they were just saying is that instead of giving them money, cash, you really try to, if they say they're hungry, go feed them. Yeah. Now, because a lot, of them, a lot of them don't want the food, they want the money, so they can take the money to get the drug or get the alcohol. And, and I've done it many times where I take them to McDonald's, I take them to Kroger's, I take them to Walmart and let them buy some food and, and you know, send them on their way. At one time I did that, it was a, it was a, it was a white gentleman. He seemed like he had regular, you know, he wasn't dirty clothes and anything, regular, like he broke down or something. I think he said he broke down. <laughs> and he was, he was saying, could you help me out? And I said, sure. And I took him to, it was Hardy's right nearby. I said, get anything you want. Whatever you want, you can get. Part of me started to see that he that's not what he wanted. 
he he more like give me the money and I'll go get it. Right? Right. But I said, no, I, I'll go get you the food if you want the food. I've seen situations where somebody's at the service station say, I need gas money. I got yeah, I've done that. Whatever. Right? I said, well, go ahead and put some gas in your car. Yeah, I'm, that's what I did. I was like, yeah. I was like, well, well, pull up to this pump. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go put some gas in your car. Exactly. And I see one was, she was already full anyway. And she said, well, I, I need it. I got, I, got, I got gas now, though. I just need, I, I'm going all the way to wherever. So I need some, I need to get some gas when I, when I get to the next location. So I need cash. I, I said, wow. Uh, well, I. I can only put gas in your car. That's all I can well, do. Well, let me pray that you run into another brother like me when you get to where you going. <laughs> <laughs> she was basically hustling. I saw she yeah. left me and went parked up and played the same trick on somebody else, trying to get that money. Yeah. You know? But yeah, no. with the bar, I've why had. Huh? No, it, it's irrelevant. Go ahead. Yeah, but th that's what I'm saying. Is that's where we want to embody of Christ that that prophecy, you see what, did you, you gotta understand what it, what you get out of that scripture I just read. Cause I, I what I got from it was the rise and shine for the light has come, right? And the glory mm -hmm. of the Lord is risen upon you. And and I like the part where it says the force of the Gentiles, this, let me put it back up there again real quick. The mm -hmm. force of the Gentiles, Brother Jackson, this, it, 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 What's it toward the end? It was like verse five, Isaiah 60, verse five. Then shall thou see and flow to the And thy heart shall in, in, in thy heart shall fear and be enlarged because of the abundance. That's talking that here's our here's our mega churches, here's our, you know, it, of the sea. That's a multitude. That means it's not the oceans, it's not water, it's talking about multitude of people shall be converted unto thee and the force of the Gentile shall come unto thee it'll come because of your you know your effectiveness of your ministry that's right and it's it's not the effectiveness of a individual ministry it's mm -hmm. the effectiveness of the body of Christ that makes a difference you yes, know that, that had to be hard for them uh when their you lifestyle know, was are you talking less to biblical than. audience brother Abs, are you talking to biblical audience yes i'm talking okay. i'm talking the children of israel i'm yeah. talking it uh, was hard for because they so used Hebrew, to be able to stand with them you know because because everybody i mean you got you got a woman talking to jesus and she's like i can't believe you talking to me yeah you know, in so many words you know what you talking to me yeah right. <laughs> you know i can only imagine yeah she probably might not even answer that first because <laughs> and uh and they were known by how they dressed as well yeah that that was how, identified. yeah yeah how how else would she know <laughs> yeah you yeah. know the difference between them and, and especially in that time come on and so for them to receive this word must must have been a uh, a hard thing to receive right. just like for me it's 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 not that it's hard to receive uh -huh. it's just outside of being in the spirit mm -hmm. to 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 uh, i hate to bring it up but to, to pray for the man success in, uh, of of coming into the body of Christ that's in the in the in the White House it's it's like I know God is more than able to change this man's heart yeah but those aren't the uh the scriptures that come to mind with me <laughs> with him you know those the scriptures that come to mind with him is you know don't cast your pearls before the swine or you know, God turn them over to a reprobate mind. Right. That those are the stuff that when I'm thinking yeah. about, you know, myself trying to to uh, be encouraged to talk well of this person or to speak life toward this person. Right. You know, and then the only thing I end up with is, you know, I pray that his soul is safe. 
and, and then I, and that's it because it's and like I said, unless I'm in the spirit. Yes, sir. It, it's it's <laughs> you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, well, see, you got to remember, you got to think that that's probably how Jesus had to deal with that in his time, right? Because you're talking yeah, about but Jesus. Moses. Jesus didn't speak kind words to everybody. No, he. He's you speaking, know, the, the 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 those religious leaders, man, he was slaying them. Yeah. He, I mean, he was basically cussing them out without using cuss words. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, but I'm pretty sure it felt yeah. the same to him. Yeah. I can't, I can't, I can I can only imagine you have somebody calling you a child of Satan. Yeah. That's and you're point. supposed to be ministering yeah. the words and the laws of the of God. Right. So I mean that that's that's low. That is low. That, that's, a, that's a hard, hard saying towards somebody. That's in that position, and then I mean, you know, you 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 kind of understand why they wanted to kill him. <laughs> you, you know what you I mean? Why they, they wanted to kill Jesus? Or yes, did you understand? But my point, I guess, reflective is what about Jesus toward them? Though that's my point. Well, yeah, but, but, but my point is, Jesus was saying it to him because it was the truth. True. It was see, the truth. But see, we can say the truth about people. You know, and, and and like like I used to back in the day, you know, just slay people to the point of they they don't want to have nothing to do with you. Don't want to hear anything. They're yeah. probably crossing the street because they're <laughs> like, here comes this dude with fire and brimstone, man. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> this dude, you can't say nothing. They gotta watch what they say around me and everything else because. The word is just coming out, and there's no, you know, there, there's, there's no gauge yeah, 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 of, yeah. of of how it's, uh, there, there's, there's no. Well, the love was there, the love of God was there, the love that they were a Christian and that they were, they were missing, at least what I thought was what God's word said toward them, which okay. was toward us. Yes, sir. and so I would regurgitate, no, no, you ain't sick. <laughs> By Jesus stripes you're healed. Right. And Jesus may be healed. <laughs> People looking at me like <laughs> he walked in a way. Because <laughs> I didn't know him. It's just yeah. if I heard them say something that would didn't line Ooh. up with, with the word, man, I was on him. Right. I mean, I really was on. And 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 likewise, if they came at me uh sideways, I'd be like, Satan, you get get from before me. <laughs> you know, you get behind me, Satan, right in their face. <laughs> You know, serious. <laughs> and, and, you know, they're sitting up there just shot. And yeah, it worked. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah, I hear you. It worked plenty of time. I'm talking about even at work. When uh, people came at me, I don't care who they were. You better get behind me, Satan. Uh -huh. and, and and it would just pause everything. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that was... Uh, that was... The word was not in my spirit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have a revelation. Exactly. Of God's word. I had the written word. Right. In a in a in a fundamental understanding of God's word. It was just literal to me. And if it was in there, that that's just how it was as far as I was concerned at that particular time in, in my in my life. Uh huh. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I think back, man, I I just see myself running from me. <laughs> D. When you think about it, right? Because Jesus, you didn't see Jesus do that, did he? Pardon? Jesus didn't do that, did he? He didn't push in, that in some forms of fashion. He did. Well, you talk about the fact that when they challenged him, right? Because they tested them. Yeah. Anyone outright called him, you know, yeah. a sinner or whatever. Yeah. But he answered every time they said something. He answer. He would give them an answer. Yeah. Now remember, he said, "My, my sheep hear my voice." Mm -hmm. Well, once could be talking about open the eyes so they can see, you know. And yeah. and as far as he sit there and say, uh, you say we're blind. He said, well, if you are blind, you you will have no sin. Cause, <laughs> cause you don't know what you're doing. But since you say you can see, then your sin remains with you. Yeah, those are some tough words. Those are some I, tough I can words. only imagine, man. The the 
these dudes and and then they gotta they gotta stay in their so-called righteousness yeah. and not attack him you know <laughs> in front of the crowd Come i can i can bet if they were like alone with him they'd probably just pummel him and stone him right there on the spot well a couple of i think sometimes he was confronted in different ways yeah he got probably whipped by them but is he had that anointing on that yeah. power is on right so so that's what i'm trying to say is that the 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 the, the world follows dealing with racism and then social injustice it's, it's the world is waiting for the church. This is an opportunity for the church to rise and shine. To, 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 but I, what I want to throw in there though is to leave with this is that they, they want you to sow into the heart of the unbeliever. So, right, Elder Johnson, you gotta don't so sleep on the video that will cut you off. <laughs> yeah, look like he's sleeping so hard his glasses are fogged up. I just give you all chance to talk this week. Okay, well, okay. I got I got something for you, uh, Elder, because this this been on my heart. Uh,